So today we're going to take a little look at a cool little emulation app called Lemuroid. Step 1, download the app. Step 2, place your ROMs on your phone. Step 3, set the directory of your ROMs. And step 4, play those until your hands fall off. So yeah, setup is really that simple. Let me take you through it. Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Lemuroid. Now, this is an awesome little emulation app that is based off a of RetroArch, except it doesn't have any of the same sort of hassles for setting up. Now, that does mean that it doesn't have as many settings to play with. So if something doesn't work, the likelihood of getting them to work by tweaking some stuff just isn't going to happen. It also doesn't support some of the cool features that RetroArch supports. But if you just want to install this, play your games on a small screen, you're pretty much good to go. So let's take a little look at it. So here's Lemuroid here. And taking a look, as you can see, the pictures, the blood for obvious reasons. This is an emulation device owning these roms is technically illegal um, if you own the original game and if you don't then it is not um, and it shows you kind of baseline what your touch controls are now the this will also work with controls as well i am currently using one of these this is a sitaki 707x i want to say a um, bluetooth controller and i'm using a huawei p30 so not the most powerful android phone on the planet and it also runs a kirin chipset and not a snapdragon so it's not going to get the best performance either but it's perfectly fine for what i'm looking to use it for and um, now let's just jump into it so at the bottom here you can see supported systems it doesn't have a huge amount like retroarch does but it has all the main ones so if you're looking for kind of more um, kind of 1980s upwards it's probably got most of what you're looking for most people are looking to do like the NES the the Super Nintendo Game Boy Advance even does all the way up to the DS as well and there's an option for that which I'll get to in a little second and um, so it gives you a good amount of stuff the support fast forward and games um, support for zip drums that doesn't work for zip, seven zip files I've noticed so just be specific with your file types for your ROMs it might make your life a whole lot easier let's take a little look I'll take you through the installation and then we'll see how it actually works so first thing you want to do is you'll want to go to the play store and you'll be looking to just simply install it now the cool thing about this is you don't have to do anything when it's done pretty much it does it for you like with retroarch you have to worry about bios files and downloading them and setting up directories and stuff not so much with this so we're just going to play very first thing you're greeted with is select directory now on my mobile phone I already have this directory set up and this is just ROMs and this is all the ones I have in it. Now obviously not all these systems are supported but they can be using different methods and different emulators so I have them all on there anyway. Um, so if we go back to the phone here just on the left and we just go to select directory, I'm already set in that directory but if you did want to choose which one you just click three dots inside and then you click on that and you can navigate through it. Obviously mine's already at the one I need it to so I'm just going to click allow access and then allow we're going to give it a minute to scan all these roms if they're on your internal memory or even your external memory this process should be fairly quick and it should pick them up fairly quickly as well which is the cool part as we can see it's still scanning my games i do have quite a collection it's not huge but it's all the main ones i want to play but what else is doing that we'll just go down the bottom here and i'm using the controller for navigation by default it just seems to work with everything i haven't had to map it for any specific consoles or anything like that so i'm just going to go into the consoles tab here at the bottom and as we can see this is what it's picked up so it's picked up the Game Boy Advance, Genesis, N64, DS, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, PlayStation Portable, and the Nintendo there as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go through a few of them and show you them working, um, just for a few seconds. So there's not a lot of customization here, so it's not like RetroArch, you can't just fire all sorts of different skins on it. It's just what you see is what you get. But if you're just literally looking to click something to play it, then you're pretty much good to go so I'm just going to come out of that there just in just in case oh, there's there at the top quit and if we go back out of that as well we can go into the genesis and i've got a couple there we'll just go for sonic that's a good popular one to go with and we see the sega logo and again you've noticed it's not asked me for any rios files but it's because it's finding them already they're already there um, and that goes for the playstation one as well i don't know how they get around about that for the cores and the bioses but some reason they do but you don't need to go find them separately which is good unlike RetroArch. um but as you can see everything i'm going into is working absolutely fine i haven't run into anything that's unplayable there's a couple of psp games that are a little bit jittery but again they worked absolutely fine and um, if we go into that and i'll go into you know whichever grand theft auto 
You'll see it'll do this, preparing game, and I believe that's when it's downloading what is required for you to be able to play and emulate those games, those PSP games. And it's going to do the same thing with the PlayStation games as well. Other ones, I noticed it was a lot, lot faster. So it was like, you know, you opened up the Game Boy Advance game, you were instantly hit with it. And this is after me doing a fresh install. So you're seeing real time how long this process in general takes. And it can take a minute or two, but after you've got it set up for the first time, it's super quick the next. So as we can see, that's GTA loading now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out a GTA and we're going to go back into it. Boom. And that's not because it's cached or anything like that. It's just because it's got the BIOS files all set up for it. But I'll show you some of the settings here. So you can set your directory, you can rescan your library, and there's a couple of things as well. So you get a couple of display filters for different options, give it a different look, just kind of over the top. Um, sharp or auto are my two kind of favorites. You can do auto save, state, vibrate on touch. You can change some of the game pads, so you can change the button allocations, which is pretty cool. Uh, tilt sensitivity cloud backup that is on google drive and so forth which is pretty cool as well and in this setting section we can also see the option for change cores now this is only available for the nintendo ds emulator why i'm not particularly sure and i don't know if it was maybe the one they had on there had bad experiences whatever and um, a lot of people recommend going to melon ds just for the layout difference and um, where it gives you the big screen and the small screen rather than side by side or vice versa for one of the two of them and um, i don't have a lot of ds games so i haven't really tried it and BIOS, you can see exactly here which ones are supported. Um, I don't know if it's going to let me scroll down. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there, it's got the Sega CD, it's got the PS original, and you can see the NTSC next to it for the BIOS is for that. So again, I'm not sure how it gets those, but it's just automatically downloading them. And now you can favorite games, you can search through your large library. But there's not much else to it, to be quite honest, after that. But yeah, Lumeroid, it is a cool little app. It's super easy to set up. Download it, fire your games in the directory in your phone, and you are off to the races. Hope this has been any help. Have fun with it. Go and play with it. Enjoy it. Um, if you like the emulation videos, leave a like and a comment below. I'm happy to make um, examples of other ones. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. Let me take you higher.